Hey everybody, welcome back to the Financial Freedom Show. My name is Rob Berger. In this short video, I wanna share with you a rule that I learned from a very famous value investor. His name is Guy Spear. In fact, let me just show you Guy. Here he is, this is a picture of him right here. This is his website. And uh, he's sort of, sort of famous for, he's one of, the, one of the individuals that spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to buy lunch with Warren Buffett. This was many years ago. I think the lunch with Warren Buffett now costs in, in the millions, but uh, he was sort of known for that. He actually runs uh, the Aqua Marine Fund, which you can see here. So he, he manages folks' investments. And he's written a great book, by the way, The Education of a Value Investor. I'll la leave links to all of this below uh, the video. But I had the, uh, the good pleasure to, to meet Guy and actually spent uh, about two hours interviewing him uh, on my podcast uh, uh, many years ago. Just a very gracious individual and an incredibly uh, good, knowledgeable value investor. And one of the things that he talks about and, and that he told me was he has this rule. It's, it's the two-year rule of investing, I'll call it. And I think it applies whether you buy individual stocks like he does uh, for his fund or you're an index fund in investor, sort of a buy and hold, and you have a fairly simple portfolio. I think this, this rule can help any uh, investor. And uh, it's simple. It's once you make an investment decision, whether it's to buy an individual stock or to set your asset allocation to, I don't know, 80% stocks, 20% bonds, or to pick a portfolio. Once you make that decision, his rule is you got to stick with it for at least two years. So if you buy a stock and things don't seem to be going well after oh a day or two or a week or a month, you got to stick with it for at least two years. And if you set your asset allocation or you pick certain asset classes that you want to incorporate into your investment uh, portfolio, you stick with that decision for at least, and I kind of stress at least, uh, because I think particularly for buy and hold index fund investors, we might even make it a bit longer, but for at least uh, two years. And this this actually came up for me, and I just want to show you a quick example. Um, I purchased Wells Fargo stock in January, and then I, I purchased some more in the last 30 days. And as I'm sure you know, Wells Fargo ran into all kinds of trouble because they were not, uh, they were, you know, running their bank in a way they shouldn't have and creating accounts that shouldn't have existed. And fortunately, they've gotten rid of all of the management that was responsible for that. But they're still, you know, trying to restructure and turn things around. And uh, yesterday, uh, they announced their quarterly earnings, and it was basically more or less what people expected. They actually beat uh, the street's expectations uh, by a little bit, but it was largely because they reversed some loan loss reserves that they had taken along with just about every other bank as a result of COVID. And uh, so that actually accounted for a good deal of their, their revenue and profit. Uh, but but all, by and by, all, all, in, all things considered, it was uh, kind of the, a quarterly report that you would expect. But look what happened. This was yesterday. They started off the day around 46 bucks. And as you can see, they went down. And they ended up going down 2% in one day. Now, you know, a stock going down 2% in one day, well, that may not be within you know, one standard deviation, but it's not all that extreme. But I was sitting there thinking, boy, you know, did I make a mistake? Now, I follow this rule, so I'm not selling Wells Fargo stock and actually think, you know, it still should be a good long term investment. But I was reminded of Guy and his two year rule when I saw that the stock was down 2%. While, by the way, just about every other bank, including Bank of America, a company I also own their stock, was up over 4%. I'm thinking, hmm, what's going on? Well, check out what's happening today. Yesterday, Wells Fargo lost uh, 2%. Today, we'll just look at one day right here. <laughs> it's up, as I record this video, and, I, and it's 10, 15 in the morning, it's up almost 5% today, 4.9%. What in the world is going on? Well, the answer is the market's fluctuating. That's just, it's just what it does. And we have to ignore all of the noise, the day-to-day, -day, the week-to-week, even the month-to-month. -month. Uh, frankly, even one year uh, is not enough time because companies go through cycles and verticals go through cycles. And I think it's best if we can just make what we think are the best decisions we can make for our portfolios. Again, whether it's buying individual stocks or you know, buy and hold sort of index fund asset allocation approach, or like me, maybe both. Make the best decisions you can and then just sort of ignore it and let it go. I really like the two-year rule. Uh, I think it's a sound way to keep us 
you know, from shooting ourselves in the foot and making just bad investment decisions. So I wanted to share that with you today. I hope it helps you on your investing journal journey. If you have any questions, of course, leave them in the comments below. And until next time, remember, the best thing money can buy is financial freedom.